Okay, I wanted to uh, do a little demonstration on a contactor. I'd seen some kind of maybe misleading information around, and uh, I wanted to see if I could clear it up. Okay, here I've got a contactor with a 24 volt coil. It's a four pole contactor. Uh, of course, not hooked up to anything. And I've got a meter set in amps clamped around one of the leads. Now what I want to demonstrate is what happens when different things happen to this coil. Now right now it's normal. Everything's fine. The contactor will pull in like it should. And let's look at the amp draw. Okay, if you notice we've got about 0.2 amps. And it pulled in normally just like it should. Now, let's go ahead and shut it off. Now, look at what I've done. I've pulled this off. This is the armature that pulls these contacts down. That's what this thing is right here because it uh, it's on a spring and you can see it move back and forth okay that pulls down makes contact here here and here and completes the the core of the magnetic solenoid now I've taken it off so that now we're missing it all we have is these poles open let's see what happens Now notice our amp draw is now 3.4. That's many times what it was when it was covered. Now I'm going to do something here. I'll take this. Okay, see what happens? Went down to 0.3. Pulled off again. 3.4. Now it's going to 0.3 again. And 3.3, whatever. Okay, why did it do that? Okay, the reason it did that, the reason when I took this off of here, off of the top of this, this core, this iron core, is it wasn't concentrating the magnetic field. If the magnetic field is properly concentrated, then it builds up back EMF. Every alternating current load, except perhaps uh, electric heating elements, has back EMF. That's electricity. Back EMF is just simply when the, the sine wave travels towards zero, then it induces as the lines of force, lines of magnetic force, cross the core, let's say it crosses the core, that induces back EMF that is actually counteracting the forward moving electric current. So it drops the amp draw. This is basic to all AC loads. Motors, contactors, relays, all that stuff has back EMF in it. And the back EMF is from these coils used uh, with a core, because the core concentrates the magnetic field. Okay, let's go a little bit farther. Okay, now I have taken the core completely, or the coil completely off the core. The core is right there, the coil is right here. Plug it in again. Okay, now we're going 5 amps. That's going to burn this coil up in a very short time. It's already getting hot. I'll burn one of these things up for you out in the shop. Can't do it in here, mom will have a fit. Uh, so, because I've taken away the core, now let's go ahead and drop this in here. Now it went down 
3.2, down to 3.0. Then, and let's see, okay, 0.3, 0.2. Okay, that's the back EMF. So, when you're doing, let's say, well, let's do an ohm check in this thing. Okay, now if you look at this thing, I'm in ohm, or I'm in amps right now, I'm going to turn it to ohms, and we will get a resistance. Okay, 4.6 ohms. Okay, now I'm going to do ohms law with this thing, and it's not going to make any sense. Okay, if we look at this uh, ohms law thing, we would divide the resistance here, or 4.2, into 24, that's a voltage, and you would end up with 5.71. Okay, that's through Ohm's Law. Now, I've got the thing all set up uh, in two tenths with everything like it should be. 3.4 with part of the core missing. Four point seven with just the core itself. Four point five, whatever. Okay, that's pretty close to five point seven one. There's still some back EMF in this thing, but because it's not being concentrated by the core, the amp draw goes way up. Now, like I said, it's not gonna be exactly the same because there is some back EMF in this thing. Not very much. You can see, well, I'm showing three. 3.8 things you this is getting hotter than heck. Uh, I'll have to give you a temperature on that thing. Okay, we're showing a temperature on it. See it's climbing up like heck, it's starting to smoke. Mama's gonna yell at me if I don't shut this thing off. Two hundred and fifty, still going up. Two sixty, okay. Okay, I hope this makes sense because the core is not concentrating the magnetic lines of force. They're not near as strong, and so you don't create much back EMF. If you don't know what back EMF is, it's electromotive force or voltage. And if you don't know what all this stuff is, that is voltage, amperage, resistance. Okay, that's what happened to these coils. Oftentimes, if this, if this contactor does not pull in, like this armature gets worn, then it will pull, because this is not pulling down right, and it's not covering this part of the core, it'll draw too much power, it'll either blow a fuse, burn up a transformer, or it could melt the, the coil there. So, ohms is not a way to test these coils, it's a way to check what, what, what you've decided is wrong. If I come out here and I get voltage to this coil, but there's no amperage going through it, then it's probably open. To make sure it's open, you put your ohmmeter across it. But don't use the EIR thing to try to figure out how many amps should go through this thing, because it's not going to work. Uh, hope this makes sense. Anybody has questions on it, I'd be glad to answer uh, anything that I think I can answer on it. And that's it for the contactor coil. Uh, stay tuned, I'll burn one of them up when I can get it out in the shop.